Hey Rubies, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Dominique Laru, back again with another video for you guys. Y'all already know how this go. Uh, new videos every week. I have been doing real good with my consistency. So, thank you guys for watching with me and being here. Today, um, I'm in a different area. This used to be my baby nursery, but it's going to be my filming room now. So, that's why you see the little baby thing <laughs> in the back. Today, we're doing a mukbang mukbang. I don't really know how you pronounce it, but that's what we're doing today. Today, we are eating. So, I made some good old good pussy chowder. That's what I like to call it, but it's a seafood chowder. And it has shrimp, crawfish, lump crab meat, potatoes, bacon, corn, green onions, celery, yellow onions. Um, let me know if y'all want the recipe um, or if y'all want me to do like a how-to on how to make this. Because I'm about to bone out the teeth, okay? Get into it because this shit is good. And you know, I got me a glass of wine right here because that's just how I like to do things. So... We're going to get into a story time as I get into this chowder, honey. And don't talk about me, y'all. So, oh, it was a big old ass catastrophe. So, I think the other night, I think I was just moving too fast. I was cleaning up. I was getting things together. And I was putting my, I was going to put the hot sauce back in the cabinet. And somehow, way or another, it ended up just sliding out my hand and busting on the floor. <sighs> my whole bottle of good old Louisiana hot sauce. Don't talk about me because I found this in the cabinet and I haven't been to the store to give me some more hot sauce so I'm using one of the little hot sauce packets from another Chinese place. Cause I like it to have uh, a little kick to it but I don't cook the whole pot spicy because you know everybody don't like that. So I'ma just put a dabble of that in there because it's not the Louisiana hot sauce for this Louisiana seafood chowder that would go in here. But sometimes, hon, you just gotta make it do what it do, okay? Stir that like this, like such, like so. But what this say, made in China? Well, it's made in China, it's made in. If it was made in China, it was just made in China, okay? Period. Now, I'm going to get on down to my bowl. Let me bring it a little closer. And we're going to get on down to this story time. So, today I'm going to tell a story about my first time. I cooked this for, well, it takes about an hour and a half, maybe two at the most, including preparation to cook. But when I put this back in the microwave, because I cooked this last night, I put this back in the microwave. It took so long to warm up. So either my microwave going out or this one of them things, my microwave probably going out. But yeah, it took a while, like five minutes in the microwave, but I like my food piping hot. Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every bite has seafood on it. Every bite have like shrimp, crab, crawfish, all of it is in there. Again, if y'all want the recipe or y'all want a video on this dish, let me know. Let my fat ass get back on to the topic at hand. So, today we're going to talk about my first time. My first time having intercourse, doing sexual relations with a young man, honey. So, in lieu of my recent one year anniversary of boot knocking, <laughs> Whoo! That shit hot. That shit hot. I'm gonna tell the premise of the story and then come back because I'm about to burn my mouth up. I lost my virginity on September the 9th. 2011 I lost it to my boyfriend at the time we we're gonna call him David I don't know why the name David just popped up in my head but 
we're gonna call him David. Of course, that's not his real name. So, brief backstory on me and David. When I was in high school, I used to work at McDonald's, the McDonald's in the hood. And I worked most of the drive through in front of counter, of course, because I'm a girl. That's where they put all the girls, most of the girls. So I'm on I'm in the drive through this day and it's just like another regular day at work and I ain't gonna lie, I used to meet a lot of niggas at McDonald's drive through because I mean, you know, I'm at the McDonald's in the hood they day, so like all the niggas be coming to this McDonald's. He comes through the line and it was one of those nights where the line was backed up, wrapped around the building. So he came on the speaker, he ordered what he was gonna order, and then you know when he got to the window and I took his money. The line was backed up, so he was at my window for a little while. Maybe about it was a rough night that night, so I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if he was like sitting at my window for upwards of about 10, maybe 15 minutes. Cause I used to do my shit in the back drive through, like on the drawer, taking the money, and I ain't know what the fuck they used to be having going on up there where they had to pass out the food. So me and him don't have nothing but time to sit there and parlay and flirt and converse because I'm the cute girl in the drive through and he the fine ass nigga in the old school. So we hit it off immediately, um, to say the least. I think at this time, I, I was 16, going on 17. He was 18, going on 19. And we both was Leos. So our birthdays was coming up. So we bonded over a lot of stuff. And we hit it off from the McDonald's drive through and just like every other Leo I've ever been in a relationship with, he didn't ask me to be his girlfriend. It was just like, you know, this is how Leo men do me. It's always, oh my God, I like you so much. You my girlfriend right now. So that's pretty much how that went. And then from that point, it'd be like an on and off. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. Rocky type of relationship. So that's been my experience with Leo men being a Leo woman. We dated on and off for about a year or so, so then we got back on. At this point, um, I'm 18, and I've graduated high school. Let's revisit my chowder. I'm, I'm a little hungry. It's still hot, but I shouldn't take such big bites. I'll maybe blow it a little bit first. That helps. So at this point, I'm 18. I've graduated high school and everything like that. So at this point, it's September 2011. I graduated 2011. So me and him is on again. In my like mid to late teenage years, me and well, honestly, like all my teenage years, me and my parents didn't have the best relationship, but it wasn't like completely fucked up. Like my parents was always there for me um, and stuff like that. But I always did struggle with being like misunderstood. I was kind of troubled. There was a really big age gap between me and my parents. So a lot of the things that I'm into, they didn't understand or felt like was a waste of time. I don't remember what exactly me and my mom argued about that day, but I was in shambles. Um, it was a really, really big argument. I said some things, she said some things, and I was really upset. And after the argument happened, my mama had left the house. She left the house, and I was there. And like, my mama wasn't really like all that strict, but you know, at this, I'm an 18 year old virgin at this point, so it really wasn't no need to be. I, I didn't have, like, I was allowed to have company, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't like do the whole sneaking out and sneaking around and stuff like that because. I was allowed to have male company. I was allowed to go on dates once I got of age. Like I said, at this point, I'm 18. So, I was allowed to have my boyfriend over and she knew him because at that point, I had been dating him on and off for over a year. He came by the house after my mom had left and he's consoling me and, you know, trying to make me feel better. Trying to make me happy again. And like, I don't know, I just, just feel so lame. Like, it just feel like a fucking lifetime moving to me. Like, girl, I had a big fight with my mom. And my boyfriend came to save me. Like, girl, that's so lame. But he was down for me. So 
I called, I was upset, and he came to me about me, period. So, one thing led to another, and I don't know how I went from crying to fucking. <laughs> if we want to call it that, but he obviously put me in a much better mood than I was in when he got there. So, I had never had sex before, and the only things that I had experienced was receiving oral, being fingered, and that was like pretty much it. Here we are um, in my room at my mama house, and I will never forget y'all, the song that was playing was She by Tyler the Creator and Frank Ocean. And you know, we kissed it, making out that whole little, you know, preliminary jazz, you know what I'm saying? He, he gave me head, and then it was time to, and then like, with getting head, it was like, I was a virgin for so long, really and truly, cause like, I was, I was getting eight out, like, you know, that's what my little boyfriends was doing for me. Because I was a virgin, like, I don't know, for whatever reason, guys really just wanted to eat my pussy, and like, fuck, I look like, turn it down to some head. I mean, that's sort of like a, you heard what she said, ma. You heard what she said. And I heard those words at a very young age. <laughs> so I applied them, honey, okay? But yeah, I guess it was like just a whole version of purity thing. Like they wanted to eat pure, put whatever, get down and get the lick and I was all for it. So I wasn't having intercourse, but I was letting them perform oral sex on me. So he did that. And he was really good at it. Shout out to you, honey. And, um, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm 18. Like, I'm kind of ready to, you know, take that next step. I'm ready to be grown. I'm ready to get that dick, okay, honey? Like, why is I playing? Like, it's obvious this nigga actually care about me. Which, to this day, I do still feel the same way. What I can say is, I was ready. It was no pressure. He was an absolute gentleman we had our ups and downs in our relationship but when it came down to sex it was it was never no pressure never ever 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 no pressure from him never ever ever any pressure from him so i'm grateful for that but i was ready to experience you know i was ready to be a big girl like i'm 18 i'm an adult technically i'm ready to be a big girl i'm ready to go all the way child that young man mounted me and got on top of me now let me say this i didn't lose my virginity to no shrimp okay at no point was it ever giving shrimp. It was never giving inadequate amount of endowment. So, the best way that I can describe this right now, imagine trying to put, like, you know, the pickles, the big pickles that come in the bag. Imagine trying to put one of those through your nostril. Just to get a girl's a visual, okay? He gets on top of me, he puts on the condom, and he, he kissing me, you know what I'm saying? He making it, he trying to distract me or whatever, but the whole time I'm in, I'm in my head like, oh Lord, I'm, I'm really about to have sex, and I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what type of feeling to expect. The only type of penetration that I've ever experienced was like one finger, because I mean, I'm a virgin, so it's not like I'm just getting, you know, it wasn't like that or whatever, so. Very, very inexperienced coochie is what he was giving in that moment. Uh, but I tried to, I tried to, I tried to be calm. I tried to be cool. But oh, honey, when he put it in, when he put it in, I felt like. I was being torn in two from the inside. It was the most 
painful and uncomfortable shit I had ever experienced in my life at that time. And it wasn't because of anything he was doing, but like I said, I didn't lose my virginity to no shrimp dick ass nigga. Like, I'm gonna keep it real, this nigga had a slump. So being as though I had never been penetrated before, and he got this big ass dick, I'm telling you, skinny niggas be, skinny niggas be coming with it. Like, the myths are true, huh? Skinny niggas be nothing but dick. And this was one of So, at that point, I'm so uncomfortable, that I'm like fighting tears at this point. Mind you, he hasn't even fully penetrated me. I would say it was like the head and some change, maybe. Just like the head and some change. It wasn't like I took the whole dick. Bitch, I no, no, not that day. I did not take the whole dick that day. So I'm like freaking out. And I'm like, oh my god, like it hurts so bad. Like it hurts so bad. Like Oh my God, please stop. And of course he stopped. Of course he stopped. And respected the fact that I didn't want to keep going. Like I said, it was no issue. No pressure with this nigga at no point. But I thought I was ready to take that dick, y'all. I was not ready to take that dick. I wasn't scared before, but once I had tried to fuck, I was scared after that. So we didn't have sex again until like December. It was like three months before I was willing to even try again. But see that second time, see that second time he ain't played with me. It was kind of like, okay, you know, we gotta get through this, but we had talked about it, you know what I'm saying? I told him I was like, okay. I'm going to try to whatever, whatever. The second time, it wasn't as bad pain-wise as the first time because I kind of knew, like, even though I was scared, I knew what to expect. So, I just knew that if I could get past this painful part, I, I understood how sex worked. So, I just had to get past the pain. And so, the second time was, it was, you know, I took the whole thing the second time. Like a big world. But it still, it was painful. It wasn't like pleasurable just yet so I don't think it, it wasn't until like maybe the third or fourth time that I had sex with him that I felt like okay now I feel something now lights are going off now I could see myself getting aroused and craving something like this okay but it took a it took a few tries it took a few tries honey see that first time I tried to be grown I thought I had it all in the bag, honey. I thought I knew everything. I said, I'm 18. I'm a grown-ass woman. I'm about to give me some dick. Fuck what my mama talk about. She done made me mad. And she think I don't know how to make decisions for myself. Girl, I don't know what was going through my head, honey. But I was 18 and I didn't know shit. I didn't know shit about life. And I didn't know shit about fucking. But, hey, you live and you learn. And that was my experience losing my virginity. And... I'm glad that I was able to lose it to somebody that, you know, really cared about me and I cared about them, even though, you know, we, of course, no longer together that we, you know, that's long over with, but I was ready and it was with who I wanted it to be with. That's my first time getting dead, honey. September 9th, 2011 was my first, my very first time. And it's been 10 years since then, and I ain't know how to fool me. But don't worry about now. Thank y'all for joining me in this mukbang and this story time. I'm going to get down to the rest of this child, honey, because I got about, I got a little time. I got about an hour or so before I got to head out and go my ass to work. So make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Let me know if y'all want more mukbang let me know if y'all want more story times let me know if y'all want more first because i'm with it i'm all for it and i'm all for this good pussy shower because if i wouldn't have lost my virginity 10 years ago and got my coochie game up in the last 10 years 
I wouldn't be able to make things like good coochie chowder. See how I bought that full circle? You see how I did that? Thank y'all so much for joining me. It has been a pleasure as usual. I will see y'all next time. Bye.